morning all of you and a very warm welcome to Buddha Box Library lecture series and a very happy holly also holly ke baad hum log pehli baar mil rahe hain to isliye aap sabko shubhkamnaye holi ki aur aaj dekhiye hamare sath dr rakesh sinha hai a learned scholar from uk by profession he is a medical practitioner and by nature he is a connoisseur of art though he is from patna and he has been educated here in patna only but uh, he is in uk since last uh, 20 years united kingdom mein hai aur university of warwick mein padhate bhi hain practice bhi kar rahe hain aur sabse badi baat ye hai ki medical practitioner hote hue bhi इनका अपना खुद आर्ट का बड़ा अच्छा कलेक्शन है पेंटिंग्स का मिनियचर पेंटिंग्स का बहुत अच्छा कलेक्शन है एंड ही हैज ए ग्रेट इंटरेस्ट इन पेंटिंग्स एंड मिनियचर आर्ट टुडे एट आर रिक्वेस्ट ही हैज अग्री टू स्पीक ऑन अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल सब्जेक्ट कंपोजिट शायद आपको याद हो यूके से एक डॉक्टर सिद्दीक थे आए थे यहाँ खुदाबुश लाइब्रेरी में एंड ही डिलीवर्ड अ लेक्चर ऑन लेगेसी ऑफ हिंदुस्तान इन ग्रेट ब्रिटेन बड़े इंटरेस्टिंग था वो भी वहां रह के अपनी जमीन से अपनी जड़ों से हम लोग जुड़े रहते हैं और अपनी यादों को फ्रेश करते रहते हैं तरह तरह से तो ये भी एक तरीका है अपने कल्चर को हिस्ट्री को दोहराते रहने का याद रखने का प्रोफेसर फिरोजा मेडल भी यहाँ आई और उन्होंने पेंटिंग्स पे स्पेशली शाहनामा और तिमूर नामा पर लेक्चर्स दिए दोस्तों वेरी कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव लेक्चर्स ऑन द मेनेचर पेंटिंग्स ऑफ शाहनामा एंड तिमूर नामा स्पेशली फोकसिंग द manuscripts and paintings we are having in kudabaks library dr rakesh sinha has based his presentation especially on akbar nama hamza nama tuti nama and some of the isolated pages prepared pages containing paintings prepared during the time of akbar and the lecture will be very interesting with a slide show and we should now all welcome the learned scholar welcome sir so thank you very much to uh, director of uh, dr bedar and all of you for coming for this lecture today uh, it is very interesting to come to some place where i had come as a child many times and uh, be inspired by the collection of uh, sir khuda baksh and uh, it's an honor to come back and speak to you about uh, the paint generally about paintings and the composite culture of paintings that was fostered under the tutelage of akbar and uh, khuda baksh library itself has a uh, very good program of promoting this composite culture through publications and books and you know seminars and all that so it, it's a great honor uh, i'd also like to welcome my friend from australia who's come all the way from australia and all you students he has got uh, you know international company placing students in all the universities so you should reach him and get some pointers from him as well so uh, today what i'll be talking about is uh, the composite culture a lot of Uh, thought and books have been written about the Persian influence of paintings on Akbar, but not much, uh, you know, importance or you know writings have been done on the Indian nature of those paintings. And uh, through my 20-25 years of looking at paintings or maybe collecting some paintings, I realize that this is a work. I mean, a subject that has not been tackled much because a lot of scholars are Western scholars. and they are not really that cognizant cognizant about indian culture or language or nuances so they miss out certain things about the typical indian culture that is shown in these paintings so 
I'll just show you a few paintings, some interesting things which you might interest you, not scholarly things about paintings, and uh, hope you enjoy that. So, so basically, I'll uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So just, that was the introduction, just a brief history, very brief history of early Mughal painting, how it started, mainly how the artists were patronized by, and we'll concentrate, because time is short, we'll just concentrate on Akbar or early painting. And then uh, my thoughts on the composite nature of painting that was encouraged by the emperor himself. And that led to, you know, the flowering of Mughal art. Next slide, please. So if you don't know, films of art, one is still here, Khuda Bhakt Library, you know. And if you look behind you, there's a letter by Mahatma Gandhi, father of the nation, and he has written that I'm amazed at the pains and work and money that Sir Khuda Bhakt spent on building this library and then giving it to the citizen of Patna, specifically. He was uh, to take all the uh, manuscripts there, but he didn't do that. And then there's a Kila house, Jalan house. But uh, they have artifacts mainly, not too many paintings or manuscripts. Kanoria collection, I don't know whether you know, it's a very famous collection of paintings. Uh, uh, they have the house in Fraser Road called Marwari Awas Creek. You know, the paintings are still extant there. It was collected by their grandfather. And uh, Manuk collection, he was an eminent lawyer in Patna. He was an Argenian lawyer, PC Manuk. His collection is now gone to the UK, it's in British Library and British Museum. So there were four major collections in uh, uh, Patna. Next slide, please. So this is uh, uh, a very famous author. He was the uh, head of you know, Los Angeles, Sia uh, Paul. And he also of Padma Sri or Padma or something like that. And he wrote about the Eastern collectors, Eastern meaning Bengal and Bihar, and among them was Gopi Krishna Kanoya. The reason I'm showing this to you is because I knew his son quite well. That's how I got encouraged into art. His son was, he also died during the COVID outbreak. But Gopi Krishna Kanoya collected, uh, you know, art, and he looked at art not just from which time it was made, or who made it, or what age it was made, but actually looking at it from the literary or poetic point of view. And that's what's written by Pratap Dilitya Paul, that he was unique among the collectors, that he did that. So that's what we're going to look at today. And among, next slide please. So that is Mr. Kanoria. He's got that famous, you know, you see, have you seen the Dilar Gan Riyakshi in the museum? So similar to that, he's got a Parashnath uh, figure in marble from modern times. He's got that Gandharan Buddha there of ivory. It's only this big, but it opens out. The temple panels open out on the sides. So these are like heritage, you know, world heritage, not just Indian heritage. And they're all in Patna. Okay? So, right, next slide, please. So, with his, uh, you know, encouragement, then what I decided that you need to read. As students, you need to read about art, you need to read about your classics. Once you only do that, then you come to the realization that, if, as Alice Bonner said in 1956 or something like that, a perfectly formed Indian miniature consists of a whole world of things. And only when you think about it, slowly, slowly, all those things come to the front. They are not like Persian paintings where they are very decorative, very, you know, so only the subject matter matters. <coughs> Next slide, please. So, coming to a brief history of uh, Mughal painting. So, what happened was when uh, Sher Shah from again from Patna, he defeated Humayu and he was exiled to Iran. And when Sher Shah died and Humayu came back, he was Humayu was a bibliophile. Bibliophile meaning he liked collecting books. His whole life was about books. When he, even when he lost a battle, he was very happy. Oh, my books were saved, even though he lost, you know. And in fact, you, you know how he died? He was reading his library and the uh, uh, mosque uh, gave the azam and then fell down because of the time for prayer. So he was a bibliophile. So when he came back from Iran, he brought with him two masters, Abdul Sawad and Mir Sayyid Ali, painters. 
and they came back with him to Delhi. And that's how the tradition of painting in India started, Mughal painting. But Humayun died very early. <coughs> and then these two were taken over by his young son, Akbar. Okay, and that's how the, uh, you know, Mughal painting started. And because of that, most Mughal painting studies concentrate on the Persian aspect of these two masters who came from Persia, which might. Next slide, please. But if you really are object, look at it, then if you look at this chart, two things become very important. Number one, under Akbar, look at that, almost three times that of Jahangir, more than three times that Shah Jahan, I obviously always there. <coughs> so the first thing that becomes clear is, he was the main patron of painting. You know, Akbar, compared to the, uh, his descendants, number one. Number two, if you look, even under Akbar, the majority of painters were from the Hindu community, not Persian. Okay? Only once you see below 50% in Shah Jahan's time. So the point I ask myself is if there were so many of Hindu painters who came from a different tradition than Persia, we are not talking about religion, just different traditions then obviously why is there not so much work on, they must have learned somewhere else and got those traditions and then they mixed it up and became, you know, Mughal art. So that's the second thing that you have to note, that uh, there were only two Persian masters, but there are so many, you know, 115, uh, you know, 145 Hindu painters under Akbar. So obviously there has to be some element of that in the complete nature of paintings. Next, next slide please. So the high point of uh, Akbar's painting, uh, so there were about 14 volumes made, 1400 paintings, you know, almost this big. And they were made on cloth. And it's interesting how they were found. In the 19th century, they were found in Kashmir. And the person who had them was using those paintings as curtains or pasted enough them on windows, you know. But they are the masterpieces, so they are now all in Vienna, most of them, 1400, but they are not 1400, there are only about 100 left, the rest are having destroyed. So that was the peak, okay. But again, if you look at it, <coughs> Mir Sahir Ali, Akbar got very angry with Mir Sahir Ali because he was very slow. He gave them the commission, make this Hamzanama. After six months, nothing was done, only one or two paintings, he got very angry. And as an excuse, Mir Sahid Ali, he said, I'm going to Hajj to Mecca. He never came back, he went. So, the Persian influence also went away quite early, okay? And more uh, importantly, if you read, if you read the Akbar Nama, Akbar Nama was written by Abul Fazl, okay? He was close friend of Akbar and confidant. And he writes very specifically, this is especially true of the Hindus. He's writing about paintings, by the way. Okay? Their pictures surpass our way of understanding. So he's saying when they paint, they bring something else to the painting, which is not there in Persian painting. Okay? And no one in the world is equal to them. This is the original critic. This is not a scholar. This is written at that time. So if we have to go back to that and look at that and say what maybe Akbar thought or what is Abu Abul Fadal saying. So this is their thought. So clearly there is a composite nature there as well. You know, it's not just Persian. Next slide please. Two I'll concentrate on kind of. There are two main artists. One is Abu Fazal. Thus one was the main artist, number one. But the problem with was, I think, in medical terms nowadays, you might say he was manic depressive. Okay? And he committed suicide in depression. So what Abu Fadal says, thus uh, one was the son of a Kahar. Kahar, you know? Palki, you know? Yeah? And he used to draw on the you know, walls of the fort and wall. And one day, Akbar saw his majesty's eyes fell on him. And he said, give him to Khaja Abdul Samad, let him train him. And then he became the master artist. But it was Akbar's eye that spotted the talent, you know. 
But all at once, melancholy got hold of him, depression got hold of him, and he injured himself with a dagger. He committed suicide. That's one. Maybe he had a mental problem. And how beautifully he writes about Fazal. After two days, he paid back the loan of his life, and grief came to the hearts of the connoisseurs. So after two days, he died. So then the next one was Basava. Uh, surpassed all in composition, you know, they say by Abu Fazal is written. And many connoisseurs prefer him to Daswan. And actually, Basavan became the favorite of Akbar. Most major important paintings of Akbar. And if you use an Indian term, he was like a Ram Bhakt Hanuman types. Even his son, Manohar Das, when you see him painting Akbar, it's a different thing when he paints. Even so that, you know, Akbar's son Jahagi rebelled against him, Salim. And when, even when he makes Salim, Manohar Das, he makes Akbar higher and better and all that. So his career floundered after that. But they were very, you know, devoted to Akbar. And that's the list of what they have, uh, you know. By the way, Basavan, I think, is a very big You know what it means, Basavan? He must have been from Western UP or Bihar. He comes from Magali. He comes from Basa. You know Basa? Basa is a bell or bullock. Comes from Sanskrit, Vishabha. Okay? Basavan is the name of Lord Shiva, driver of the bull. You know? So remember this, I'll show you another picture. So I think my view is he is from Eastern UP or Bihar. So that name is very typical of this area. Anyway, next slide please. So this is what a typical Persian painting by Abdul Samad looks like. You know, horses, very, you know, uh, there's no perspective as such. It's very two-dimensional. You know, the rocks are single colored. Uh, the horses and the figures are very generic figures. You know, they are not individual figures. Next slide please. Uh, this is a portrait of uh, Abdul Samad of himself. So it's a very generic, you can't make out whether it's Abdul Samad, it's a very generic portrait of a young person reading a book, you know, your typical rocks and golden sky with, you know, trees with every branch. And the perspective is not there. Then if you look at the bottom, there are stylized flowers, big flowers. But you can't make out which flower, they're just stylized flowers. Next slide, please. This is by Abdul Samad of Akbar, Shaheen Shah Akbar, playing on a bullock cart. So the theme has become Indian. You know, we have bullocks, we don't see this in Persia, okay? But the treatment of the, uh, you know, figures are all very Persian. You can see, you can look at it and say it's a Persian type painting, very flat, very decorative. Look at the carpet, very decorative carpet on the bullock cart. The faces, you can't tell whether it's Akbar or anyone, it's very generic figures. So this is by uh, Abdul Samad. Next slide, please. What is happening in the rest of India at that time? So if you look at the rest of what you might call, it's not true, Hindu painting, but it's not Hindu painting, everyone did it. But this was what was there in India before the Persian masters came. So this is from uh, Lord Chanda and Champavati and Bilhan and all that. So the colors are very bright. The colors are very monochromatic on uh, you know, the patterns you see on the clothes, they, they have very different block painted. They pay a lot of attention to clothes and the textiles and the pattern in the clothes. They pay attention to the borders. Uh, if you see on that painting, that border, it almost looks like, uh, you know, bamboo poles, stylized, abstracted, or, you know, marble, you know. And actually, today also, if you see some Madhubani painting, they will have the same border like bamboo poles, you know. So this is all coming from the Indic tradition. Next slide, please. This is an early Mughal page from the Tutinava, or Shuknavali in Sanskrit. Shuk is parrot. Okay, Tutinava is tales of the parrot. You can see a mixture of both the Indian elements. This is an early page from Akbar's time. But you can see some decorative hints in the carpets, the tiles. But if you look at the back in the trees, it's very painterly. So there is already some mixing happening between both Persian and Indian uh, styles. Next slide, please. And now if you see an early page by Basava, this is a very early Putinava page by Basava, you can see the clothes, you know, they have some modeling. And, you know, look at the curtain on top. So almost like a 3D effect. So it's no longer two-dimensional. 
look at the uh, you know person I'm uh, sitting uh, in the corner. I'll show you another picture later on. So, uh, you see the with the red turban and yellow jama. I will see you one again. Next slide, please. So again from Tutinama. So in this one and uh, previous India, you can see there are a lot of similarities between the Indian paintings and early Mughal paintings. Next slide, please. And this is a, another important painting by Basawan, Origin of Music from Tutinama. And the origin of music in that story is, you see that bird in the corner, it has got a long beak with seven holes. Okay, and those seven notes are coming from there. But again, now you see the trees and the water at the bottom, all that is becoming more and more, all the rocks, and they're becoming more and more realistic. Some Persian elements you can see in the carpet, but you know, it's all coming together. You can see it all coming together. Next slide, please. And this is the Hamza Nama, magnificent. And this is by Basawa. And look at that. You know, this is the prophet saving Elias from drowning. And Elias is catching the robe of the prophet. And look at the water. Look at the fishes. It look like Patna ka Majri type of fish, Royal Rahu type fish, you know. You can see that. And look at the peacocks. But when you look at it closely, next slide, those elements you can still see. Each and every leaf outlined in gold, each and every you know feather of the parrot of the peacock. So all this is coming from the Indian side of things. But when you look at it, there, there was a very famous uh, collector and author called Stuart Carey Welch. And he was in a lecture and people who were talking about Taj Mahal and people were saying, oh, this was Pietra Dura from Italy, this came from Damascus and this came from that. So he got up and he said, this building would not have been made anywhere but in India, where whatever the influence, doesn't matter. It has all come together and here. So this is the same thing, you see, everything has come together in a composite way and something new has happened. And this is, you know, the prime example of Mughal art. Next slide, please. This is again Basawa. No one can make this anywhere in the world, you know. This is um, uh, um, Abir Hamza fighting the water dragon. All the boats are like Indian with the, you know, both uh, prows are of different animals and he's shooting an arrow at the makar which is coming out of the water, the dragon. So this is by Basavan in the Hamza Nama. Next slide please. And this is by, uh, you can make, I can make out, this is easily you can say this is by Daswant. But Daswant is very, you know, hyper energetic. He was manic depressive, no? So you look at there were hundreds of figures, big, small, you know, the style is full of energy, different colors in the skin. And uh, when I look at it, uh, next slide please, Janta Caves, you know, the king in the Jataka tale being royal consecration being bathed by water. A typical similar scene you see. So there's so many influences are coming there, but we don't know about it because we don't, are not aware of these things. So all these kind of strands of different art come together to you know form the mature Mughal art. Come next slide, please. And finally, among the artists, so this is by I can tell you this is by Basavan. This is the picture showing Alexander meeting Plato. You know Socrates and Plato and all that. So Alexander is gone to the cave to meet Plato. But if you look at the figures. The person cooking the food is wearing a dhoti, you know. There's a chap who's wearing a Central Asian cap. But again, the Indian side becomes very, if you see, even the wild animals, you know, the pair of jackals there, a bird there, they're all listening to the philosophical debate. This is coming from the Indian side of things, you know. Even the uh, huntsman at the corner holding the hawk is pointing towards, you know, uh, Plato to listen to the philosophical debate at the corner. So this is by Basavan actually. Next slide please. If you saw that, you would say this is also by Basavan. But if this is not by Basavan. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, below Jamshed writing on the rock, below that rock there is an inscription. You know Jahan Akbar's son Jahangir was a great connoisseur of painting. He has written in Jahangir Nama even by looking at someone's eye or someone's hand I can tell which painter has made it. 
he was that good. And the paintings that he liked, he always used to inscribe or write on them in his collection. Oh, rock ke niche likha hai. This is the work of Faja Abdul Sahab. So Jahangir has said that this is the work of Faja Abdul Sahab. So what do you think now? The master has become the people. He is cocking Basavan now. His Persian style has completely changed. You know, all the pupil has become the master. So even Khwaja Abdul Sawad is now painting like Basavan. You can see. Uh, I'll show you next slide, please. This was what he used to paint. You know, his old style. But he has now completely changed to this new Mughal style. Okay? Next slide, please. So, what does Abu Fazal say about it? Again, you have to go back to the original source. He says, his perfection is mainly due to the glance of his majesty. Meaning, Abdul Samad has changed his style mainly because what Akbar said or wanted, you know, isn't it? So that his now he has changed from subject to spirit. So what he was making was like, you know, just normal paintings, you know. But now he has changed and something else has come to his painting, like Basavan or the rest. So that's what Abul Fadal says about Abdul Samad. Next slide, please. <coughs> next. Personality, how did it come about? That's the next question. Okay, I mean, there are so many painters, but how did this style come about? So obviously, we have read about Abul Fadal saying about Akbar. So obviously, it had to do something with the patron. He patronized, he said, hey, this is not good or this is good. That's how that art came up. He could have said, I like the Persian one only. So the Persian style would have carried on. But that didn't happen. So he was very, physically he was very vigorous. People don't know about uh, Akbar, but he was, there are two, two or three things that is very clear about him from his biography. People are, one, he had no fear. He was incredibly brave. He has known to charge enemies with just 15 people. You know, and, and the armies have run away. He came to Patna, monsoon season. He was very fond of elephants. The whole river was flooded. And he insisted on going on the river on the boats. A lot of his, you know, nobles said, sorry sir, we can't go. It's very dangerous. But he came, he came to Patna. The Afghan army was across in Hajipur. He sent a message. Why, why should we have a battle? Why don't you say, I will send my elephant, you send your elephant, we'll have a fight, whoever wins is fine. No reply. Then he said, okay, I will send my wrestler, you send your wrestler, whoever wins is fine. No reply. Finally, he said to Daud Khan that I will come myself, I'll have wrestle with you. And whoever wins is fine, no answer. So at night, midnight, he climbed on his elephant called Jal Singhar. Okay, and he said, I'm going to cross. No one came with him, only 10, 15 people came with him. One or two boats from Patna, he crossed at night in that monsoon. Early morning, 3, 4 o'clock, he comes out on the other side, on his elephant, with the sun coming from this side. The entire Afghan army ran away when they saw him. Oh my God, he has come here. So he was incredibly brave. People don't know that, you know. He, he didn't know fear at all. Since young age, he was also very inquisitive. This is an excerpt from a letter. He was also very approachable. So I'm sure he would have approached, or the artist would have approached him with the painting. He would have said, this is right, this is wrong, or this is good, this is bad. And Abul Fazal and writes that he himself directed which scenes are to be painted, including very normal scenes. If he liked it, he would have liked it to be painted. And this is an excerpt from a letter to the Shah of Persia where he says, why he is greater than them, sarcastically. He says, because you guys have only got one religion, but my, I have got so many tribes of different religions who I rule over them, and I look after them. So my rule is greater than them. So he was very kind of all-encompassing. I thought people, I mean, people know that. Next slide, please. So this is Akbar. And that is Abul Fazal. I have told you so, much, so many things about Abul Fazal. He is giving him the Akbar Nama after it was written in 
15, 17, 16, 18, the first time it was being presented to Akbar. You can see those three books. He's, it is being presented to Akbar and he's sitting in uh, his throne. Next slide, please. So what are the things he got painted? You know, Hamza Nama, mythological. Okay. Siege of the uh, Rantham Ghor. You see they were building a town. see Akbar is directing the uh, proceedings at the bottom, right at the bottom. Another interesting thing you will notice is when you walk up on the stairs here and you see all the paintings, it always says, if you see at the bottom, Tara Miskin or Amar Sarwan, Tara Samwan, Amar, what does it mean? And where does it come from? Tara means composition. Who has composed the picture? Usually the master artist used to compose the picture. And Amal Miskin, who completed it by filling in the colors and all that, is a junior artist. Sometimes, rarely, a single artist did everything. And where, why do they give prominence to Tara or composition? Any idea why they give? Because this is an Indian tradition. If you look at the even the old Vishnu Dharmantara from 8th century, 12th century, what they say is, Rekha Prasanta Sarachare. So the general public likes the colors. Ladies is very feminist to say now, but ladies like ornamentation in the paintings. The you know connoisseur like me or someone else will like the 3D effect or shading. But the masters only praise the line, Rekha, means composition. So on a blank piece of paper, the genius is the one who imagines and draws the composition. So that is why when you see downstairs, in the, always you will see first name will be the Tara, or who composed this picture, not the one who painted or whatever. So same thing you can see in the Rantham or you can see Tara Miskin. And all these artists had their own, by the way, specialization. Miskin was a specialist in action scenes, battle scenes. Okay, so you always you find the best battle scenes would be made by Miskin. So battle scene. Next, he's got something painted of a picnic. A rich king makes a painting of but he has got it makes it. He is going on Yamuna, you know, there are musicians at the back, someone is washing the plates at the back, at the bottom there are all big, you know, uh, containers of food. So a uh, scene of a picnic. Next line, next slide. This is a scene from by Miskin again. This is a scene of Hari Vamsa or Bhagavad Pra. Okay, Krishna lifting the Mount Govardhan. You know, made for Akbar. Next one. This is also an interesting painting. This is his mock. He has got himself painted in, the, in his normal daily routine. Okay? So morning he used to get up. You see? Can you see that lungi is wearing? Blue check lungi. You can see it today also if you go in the bazaar. Yeah? And what is he doing? Morning his habit used to be to do Surya Sahasrana. He used to pray to sun because he believed in the divine light. Okay? So in the corner, just in the corner, you can just see a sun. He's faded, but he's praying. He used to go in the garden, open his shoes, standing there. He is not even dressed. He is just wearing a lungi. And morning he used to do that. Okay. Next slide, please. This is another by Basavan. Actually, on the top you can see Jahangir has written something. That's his handwriting. So this is by Basavan of his famous Jain saint that he was very close to, Akbar. So Hev Chand Suri. That's his portrait by. Uh, Basavan, next slide. Any idea who this is? Who is this? This is the Amir of Amirs, Khani Khana, Abdul Rahim. Okay? So, very close confidant of Akbar. Okay? His father was Bairam Khan, who looked after Akbar when he was young. Yeah? So, not only was he surrounded by uh, you know, all these things. He was surrounded by very intellectual people as well, like, like Rahim, who wrote in Sanskrit, he wrote in Persian, he wrote in... We all know him as Rahim, Rahim Ke Dohe, in Hindi. Okay, next slide. There's one of his famous Dohe's of Rahim. Cha ki chinta jantati, manwa beparwa. Jinko kachura chahiye, wo shaham ke shah. So he's written by Rahim Ke Dohe. He's famous. Next slide, please. This is now a very interesting case, okay? So this shows us that Akbar was conversant in Hindi. People don't know that much, but his uh, normal language when he spoke to his painters or must have been Hindi. So what happened was Adam Khan uh, was his foster brother. 
and he slowly became became very very powerful. He started acting, and a lot of people went to Akbar and said that this fellow is not uh, good or is uh, you know not behaving properly. And Akbar always used to say, no one can cross the milk from the river of milk, not even me. River of milk because foster wet nurse, you know, foster mother. Foster mother's son, Adam Khan. So he said, I have drunk her milk, how can I, you know, do anything about it? But one day, he crossed all limits. Adam Khan came, I see bottom. He has killed Akbar's teacher, Ataga Khan, who was there from Humayun's time. And then he rushed upstairs. Akbar was sleeping. See, this is made by action scene. This is made by mistake. You can see Akbar is only wearing a lungi, his bare body. And Abul Fadal writes that he came there and he tried to, Akbar asked him, uh, he cursed him, and then he tried to come near him and Akbar just punched him. One punch. And he collapsed. And then he had him thrown down from the floor. Okay? So, in uh, Abul Fazal's time, they have kind of censored what he said. They said they called him Bachai Lado, or son of, son of a female dog, he called him. Akbar. And then punched him. But actually, there was a Persian courtier who was there that time, who saw Adam Khan. By, his book is in Persian, it's not here, it's in uh, Rampur library, it's not been translated, but there are excerpts. So, Bayezid Bizar writes that uh, he killed him and then he went up and the thing was he was going to assassinate Akbar. Akbar was sleeping. And Akbar, obviously he had no fear, he thought, what is this going on? And he wanted to come out. But the uh, his uh, sentry, the, whatever the eunuchs that are there, they, they, they closed the door so that he couldn't come in. And so Akbar came out of the side door and that Yunak gave him a sword. So you see, he's holding a sword in his hand, but he's not wearing anything else. And Bayezid Bizat then writes that he says, Hazrat Bazuban, Hindustani Farmudan. He spoke in Hindustani. He was angry, very angry. So when he became angry, he started speaking in his mother tongue. You know, Hazrat Bazuban, Hindustani Farmudan. He air, then he gave him a very bad gali in Hindi. I am not saying that here, but it is a typical North Indian gali. Have you killed my Ataga? And then this guy started touching him and he punched him. So we know that he spoke Hindi. You know? So obviously he would have had contacts with the painters. You know, in Sir, Hindi. what's the name of that book? book, book uh, is, uh, the book is about the Khandan of Himayu and Akbar. And I can't remember the Persian name. Right. Rampur Library. The writer is? I can send you the details. Okay. Bayazid Bizat. Okay. He was a prince, Persian prince, who See. was in the court. Okay. Next slide, please. So he was, you know, uh, next slide, please. Oh, he's not. So he was involved with uh, all these intellectual people. He knew Hindi, and his nature was such. This is the very famous scene from Palam. There's an airport now in Palam. So he okay. was hunting. And then suddenly he fell into a trance. And you can see he's, he's fallen into a trance. And people are bringing water or whatever else. You can see the hunting, you know, all these meal guys are lying there. And he, some people say maybe he was epileptic, but we don't know. But he fell into a trance. You can see Akbar is leaning on his rifle, he's just sleeping. And then after he woke up, he disbanded the hunt. And uh, if you don't know, then he became vegetarian, by the way. He never ate meat. And uh, so he was spiritual as well. So all these things combined. Next slide, please. So these are some of the texts that he wrote, uh, that he got made for for himself. You know, uh, Tuti Rama, Tears of the Parrot. Razam Rama is Book of War, or oh, it's, a, it's a, you know, translation of Mahabharata. <coughs> Hari Vamsa is a translation of Bhagavad Puran. Ramayan as well. Now some of his courtiers, Rahim and all, also got books made. And the one of the greatest books that is extant is Khandani Tumuriya, which is here. His masters have made paintings in that. 
which is here in Patna. Okay, Zafar Nama and Darab Nama. Next slide, please. Now, finally, in the last section, that I can see, or maybe when you start seeing, this is one of my paintings which I have got, which was in my very bad state, which I have got, you know, uh, restored. Next slide. And at the back now, after restoration, you can see the chapter of the, I can't read Persian, but I don't know, but it's the chapter from uh, the Akbar, first Akbar Nama. Next slide, please. And this shows, it's an important folio, this shows the first battle when he was 14 years old of Akbar. Okay? So you can see Akbar sitting on the throne. In front of him is Baron Khan. And he has defeated Sikandar Suri in one court. Okay, and in the hill, you can see on the top four, people are coming down from the horses. And behind Bayram Khan, you can see the surrendering delegation. They are surrendering to Akbar. So important for you. Next slide, please. And you can see a very young Akbar. You can see Bayram Khan. You can see, you know, the inner circle of the tent. Next slide, please. So, what are the Indian elements? So this is from the Vastu Shastra, old one, which says the diagonal, you know, Madhya Rekha Kika. The diagonal in a folio represents Vayu or wind, which means breath. It demonstrates the life force of the subject, a diagonal composition. Next slide, please. And, yeah, next slide, please. So you see, it's a very, next slide, please. You can see the diagonal composition like that. So, and this is, I think, by Vasavan. You can see on the top, you can see the same figure as in the Tutinama, the red, uh, uh, you know, dress and beard and all that. So, a very strong diagonal composition by uh, Vasavan. The most famous uh, composition by Vasavan is in the DNA. Next slide, please. Is this. What Akbar used to do, he had a very bad habit. Whenever the elephant used to be in must, or killing everyone, he used to jump on top of the elephant and try to control it. And people used to tell him, why are you doing this nonsense, you know, you can get killed and all that. So his answer always used to be, if God wants me to die, I will die. If I don't die, that means he wants me to rule. You know, he had no fear, I told you. So, he's on uh, the elephant known as Hawaii, was a very malevolent animal, he used to kill anyone. And across the Yamuna, on a, you know, uh, bridge, that elephant is trying to kill the other elephant and he is trying to control it. And on the other side you can see people and goatees are praying, you know. Some people have died, some people are falling in the water. A very strong diagonal composition. This is a very Indic tradition, this is not a Persian tradition. That diagonal composition shows you the life force and the vitality of the subject. And this is showing you Akbar's, you know, vitality. Next slide please. See, he just jumped on the elephant without anything, his bare feet, his foot is, he put his foot under the rope, can you see, <coughs> to, to hang on to the elephant. And uh, there's uh, people have, someone has been crushed there, people have fallen in the river, and that elephant is trying to kill the other elephant. Next slide, please. What else can you see which is Indian? Can you spot anything? Next slide, please. See how he sits. How Basavan has changed the Persian posture into a yogic posture. So if you see his legs are away from the haunches. That is a typical yogic pose known as Virasan, warrior pose. You know, so that, look at that. So the Indian artist has, you know, projected him as a warrior. Okay, next slide please. Next slide please. What is the difference between Akbar and his ancestor Hulagu Khan? Both made by Manohar, Basavan son. What is the difference? Next slide please. Look. The Indian emperor always sits with bare feet. Why is that? Same artist has made it. But when he is making a Central Asian emperor, ruler, he has made books. You can see a stairsman. One of the painting of a Persian prince sitting with courtiers. He also be wearing boots. Not getting any chill. Because an Indian king is considered an incarnation of Vishnu, protector of the earth. Okay. So, as Vishnu, as the god, 
you cannot wear shoes. You have to be bare. All gods are bare feet, by the way. If you look at the Indian tradition, gods have to be bare feet. Unless they come down to earth in some incarnation, like Ram or someone. But otherwise, they have to be bare feet. So look at that. It's very typical. This is also an idiom introduced by Basavan and the early masters and followed by the later Mughal art. Next slide, please. This is the painting of Basavan and you can see it on on the staircase. Look, he is wearing boots, green boots. Okay, next slide, please. So, Man Singh was a general of Akbar and there's a book called Man Charit, written by a poet, his poet. Usme the poet writes that Lakshmi half the year stays with Vishnu and half year stays with Akbar's heart. Because he is the his incarnation of Vishnu. And Akbar himself wanted to be portrayed as an Indian king. Always. With elephants, with you know, all those symbols. And he obviously then encouraged his artists to project him like that. And that's why we see that. Navishnu Nipati. So a, a king is like a Vishnu. He is the protector of earth or his empire. Next slide please. This is another folio of young Akbar arresting Abu Mali. And again you see the same bare feet, Virasan, again you see another thing that you see which you see in Indian painting which you see here as well. So young people, pre-teen or teens, young warriors like you see pictures of Ram and Lakshman, the early ones, in that one was or before that when they were very young, they will always show them as a curved uh, sideburn. It's known as Vyakrana, like a tiger claw. Next slide please. So this is coming from, you know, Kalidas, when he describes how a young warrior should look like, like in uh, Kumar Sambhavam. Next slide. When he was describing Ram killing Tarka and all that, as a young warrior with a Tarka Paksha, which is looking like a tiger claw. So that same thing you can see now. Young, sitting in Virasan, you know, and what, one more thing that you will note about Akbar is in many of his paintings, unlike his descendants, he will always wear white colored clothes, very plain clothes, less, even less plain than his courtiers. They show you his personality. Uh, he was not that, uh, you know, materialistic in that way. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is, I'm just showing you a technique where the, the bindu is the center of the circle, the center of the universe. The axis mundi, so right in the center of the red circle, you can see his red turban is right in the center of that. But there are some very nice things if you look at it for a long time. For example, if you look at Akbar's tent, behind his tent there are two carpets. Okay? One carpet has got edge which is like lines, one carpet has got chevrons. But if you look at it at the bottom, the carpets are you know separated like this. So Basavan is trying to tell us that this is not a royal camp, this is a war camp, portable. Carpet will arrive to teddy very So you know, that's the artistry. You can see that. You know, if you saw the previous painting, everything will be perfect. All carpets will be in line, everything. But here, he wants us to see that this is a portable war camp. It's not a, you know, royal camp. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah. So you say in the center of the circle. This is also a very Indian thing to place when they make the composition, how to place, where to place the main subject. If you are making a circular composition, it has to be right in the center of it. You know? Next slide, please. This is from Zafar Nama. Niche likha hai Khem Karan. It's made by Khem Karan. And this show, this is also I find very interesting because Akbar has asked maybe this is his artist to make the Zafar Nama, book of victory of his ancestors, Timur. So Timur ko hum log kya sohste hai? He came and he killed so many people in Delhi. Aaj bhi sohste hai ki 100,000 plus Delhi people were killed and massacred by Timur's army. So it was a genocide. Now how does the artist show it? Because he can't say that uh, your ancestor commits, uh, committed a genocide, can he? After all, he is uh, Akbar's ancestor. So he has used a beautiful metaphor of birds. Can you see the birds at the bottom? Next slide, please. So 
So, and this is also a very typical Indian, you know, uh, type of artistic impression where they show multiple episodes in one picture. Okay, multiple episodes. This is a very Indian thing. So the eagle is coming, he is coming down that side, he is chasing all different kind of birds and finally killing one bird there in the middle. Next slide please. No, next slide please. Can you see that? Even the drop, the painting is this big. Only this big. Okay? But you see, even every droplet, even drops of blood that are coming out of that. And uh, that shoveler is now screaming because the hawk is now, you know, biting into the chest. Okay? And you can see the river is frothing. So, this is also a very ancient metaphor. Upanishad mein hai, the metaphor for a king when he comes and kills everyone and uh, the army comes and loots everyone is not a good thing. It is like how and what happens to the public, what do they do? So the public behave as if on the horizon an eagle has come and all the birds are running here and there what to do now. You know, so the same metaphor he has used, Khemkar. Instead of showing Timur and all that, he is showing a bird like a hawk is coming and all the population is just going hither to there, some are being killed, you know. So I wanted to show you this is a beautiful uh, uh, picture, metaphorical picture. This is not a straightforward document. You have to think about it, why he has done it, you know. Not really showing Timur. And next slide please. So that's from Upanishad, Atharvav, Avatharvav. Now just like when an eagle comes and all the patratani, all the all the birds start going around, this is what happens when a marauding king comes. Next slide. So this is what I want to show a different picture. <coughs> Lakshman has been shot, he is fainted. The uh, doctor has come, Susain. Okay. And he is telling, now we, we need Sanjeevi Bhuti, what to do? Hanuman jumps across the blue sea. The mountain is all, you know, crystal, it's all shining. He doesn't know which herb is what. So he picks up the whole mountain and brings back. So this is a typical Indian painting where multiple episodes are, you know, being shown. Similar to that you saw in that previous picture. Multiple episodes are being shown in one plane. Because they have to condense the text into one. You can't write pictures about every episode. Next slide, please. So that one is shown. That one is again another picture from Zafar Nama. So that is by uh, Vishandas. And uh, in this he shows Timur. But again, now you see going towards, you know, Jahangir's time. Going towards Jahangir's time. Figures become more and more realistic. The spiritual or deeper element of Mughal painting becomes less. It becomes more refined, more decorative. Next slide, please. But in Vishandas picture, Jahangir writes about Vishandas that he was unequal in the age for taking likeness. No one could make, make portraiture like Vishandas. So even when the embassy went to Shah of Iran, Vishandas was sent to take pictures of the Shah. And here you can see what is uh, you know given in the Vishnu Puran. Look at the, all the Indians different type of Indians. Bharateshu, Triyo Pursha, Nana Varne, Pratitrude. The Indians, women and men, Vishnu Puran will have. Triyo Pursha, Nana Varne, they don't say not, different caste or different religion, Nana or different colors. One is color. So you see there. All different complexions. You know, dark, fair, you know, saula, you know, so this, uh, you know, and he was, Absolutely, Nichi aap agar dekhe. I don't know, Madam Askar or Dolphin dikta hai ke nahi. Yaha, pahle to bhoot dikta tha. See a Ganges Dolphin at the bottom. So, very realistic, you know. So, you can see that. Next, and look at that uh, boar prow. It's a cheetah, Indian cheetah. In the head, you know. They used to be decorated like that. Next, next slide, please. Also, uh, coming from Akbar's time, we are coming to the end now. This is also a picture of Jahangir. And he is visiting a sadhu known as Jadru, or Jadru. 
and he often used to go and meet him. But you see how the artist has separated the planes. Below, this is also a very Indian technique. Below is the world, material possessions, royal, royalty, form, you know, money. Above that is blank, is spiritual. There is nothing there. And what does uh, Jahangir say about uh, this meeting? Next slide. So he says that I went to Jadhrup, I didn't want to trouble him, I didn't want to call him, so I went uh, near Pyar, get down from the boat, then walked for two or three posts to meet him, and then I, how many guys he said? Six guys, no? So 12 to 6. So 72 minutes he spent with him. Yeah, just talking about, you know, Vedanta and Sufism and all that. Okay, so this separation of planes is also a very Indian thing. Next. And I can show you a picture. This is a, go uh, next one, please. This separation of planes, you can see an Indian Hindu painting as well. On the top, all the gods from heaven are coming down. The division between the heaven and earth is that river, the river Ganga in the middle. Can you see that? Then all the gods have come down and they are paying respects to. Now, this is very unusual. Shiva is a sadhu, but he is wearing a crown, if you see. Very unusual. So this is his incarnation as Maheshwar, king of gods, he is a king. That's why he is wearing a crown and all the gods are coming down and paying respects to him. But you can see the same separation between two different realities. Whether one is material, one is you know religious, one is heaven, one is earth. So very typical Indian thing. Next slide. Sir, earlier, what was the reference of that Jahangir meeting that sadhu? Jahangir, this is from uh, Jahangir's uh, album. Okay. And he was, uh, there are two or three paintings that he used to go and meet Jadru. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's one painting. There's one more painting of him going and meeting Jadru. And uh, he used to go himself and leave everything behind. Mm -hmm. All his royalty, everything behind, and go and meet him alone. And so that was the reference. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. And uh, another, you can see in this, they have separated. Uh, uh, on the top are the Sufis, Bhakti Arkaki and you know, Dizabadit Aliya, all that. Uh, it's a hypothetical portrait, but at the bottom are all Hindu saints, you see, in the same painting. Next slide, please. So, in the next slide, so this is all, uh, you know, Dizabadit Chisti and all that are there. But when you go to the bottom, uh, the artist has made for Akbar all the Hindu saints. Go down to the next one. So, you can see Nam there, you can see Kabir, you can see even the 12th century Goraknath, you can see all those saints are there, uh, Hindu saints at the top. Are so, different, uh, you know, demarcation, giving you the composite, uh, you know, nature and culture of his time. Next slide, please. And finally, any idea who this is? Is a descendant of Akbar? Next slide, please. So this is young Dara Shikho. Okay, this this is a private collection. It used to belong to Warren Hastings. Warren Hastings to be the Governor General of India. So look at it. So in Sufi thought, uh, there's a saying that I saw my Lord as a young boy with his cap awry, tera pena cap, young boy. That is the image that has been made. But he also wrote Madhavan Bharin. So the artist has made him like a sadhu, he's sitting in Sukhasan, see, wearing a dhoti. And what is he, uh, uh, you know, next next slide please. See at his bottom there is a pomegranate, which is half open. It is a very potent symbol of Sufism, the knowledge, you know, universal, universal knowledge. On, on below his other feet you can see the sun symbol, you can just see the sun symbol that you saw in Akbar, worshipping the sun. All the rays coming out on the carpet. You have, you have the three wine cups, and then again, like what is said about how do you take out the message from the Upanishad or Gita, or whatever it is, he has picked up. Go back one, back, back space. One more back space. So, or, or one front. So there's a next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. So there's a plate of pearls. Again, next one. There's a plate of pearls next to his knee on the brown floor, out of the three pearls, he has picked up one pearl. You know? So he has picked up the essence of knowledge from whatever he has done, reading or whatever. So that's an Indian system of picking out the, you know, the Raj Hans picks out the Moti from the, you know, so that's what the artist is showing. 
and this is a picture of you know young Tara Shiko, both as a Sufi and as a Indian sadhu together. Next slide. Next one. And finally the last one, this is just to show you, I told you about the Tara and the composition and the Amal who colors it. This is a rare picture I've got. And this is of Akbar hunting. It's a fragment. You can see it's a fragment. Okay. And Akbar, you can see at the bottom, he is drawing an arrow on the horse. And all kinds of animals have been uh, killed. Next slide, please. So this is the finished picture in Victoria and Albert Museum. Okay. After it's been painted, if you see at the bottom, it says Tara Mystic. Amal Sarwan. I can't read from Amal Sarwan. Anyway, next slide please. Now I want you to look at Akbar. See, first of all, he looks very young. You know, this picture has been made in Akbar Nama from 1580s. So he must have been around at least 50 years that time. But look at his face, he looks very young. He's drawing an arrow, he looks very energetic. He looks very virile. Also, look at the uh, three people who are skinning uh, holding a stake and they are skinning a black buck there, one in the blue dress. You know, blue dress and uh, yellow orange uh, pajamas. Next slide, please. Go so that 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 person and Akbar. Next slide, please. See in the original sketch with Miss Kim. First of all, look at his mastery. He has made the composition in reverse image. It's ulta. Why do, you, do you think, why do you think they'll marry Ulta? Any ideas? No idea how they made? So what used to happen is, uh, once they made the drawing, on the outline, they used to make tiny holes. Okay? And then that painting used to be kept on paper and they used to charcoal dust. So through the holes, that outline used to come on. This used to be called a khaka. Khaka. And then copies used to be made. So many copies used to be made. And they were all colored to try out the color scheme. Finally, one was selected. This is the right color. That is to be made. So that actually, what I have got is a khaka. This is an original by Miskin. And the khaka composition would always be made by the master, master artist. And look at his mastery. He made it reverse image. You know? So, so he has imagined. Now, look at Akbar, he looks old in the Akbar. And look at the person who is doing the skinning of the black buck, he's got a big beard, he's looking old. But when the final thing has been made, it is like Akbar period photoshopping. You know, he has made him very young, even the uh, person who is skinning the uh, baby is an important servant or whoever, he was there that time. So even that has been made. So it's a very interesting picture of how you know, the imperial image used to be projected in the final copy, making them younger or more virile. Next, next slide, please. So this was the genius of, you know, the early Google masters, you know, combined with the, you know, patronage of Akbar, generally speaking, that he made them do these things, or he directed them towards this composite culture that, you know, created or made, made Mughal art possible, and then later on it flowered more under, you know, Jahangir, and, uh, you know, uh, Shah Jahan. But in my view, Jahangiri and Shah Jahan paintings become a little bit more sterile. They don't have that energy that you see in the paintings from uh, Khanani Tumuria or Parnama. They have a lot of vigor in them. And uh, next slide, please. This is the final slide. This is just to show you one by Basavan San Manohar Das, showing the old Akbar. By the way, Manohar and Basavan, they created a genre of painting, which even Rembrandt and all those copied. Western artists also copied. What was this genre? Double portrait. So they made double portrait, like Akbar with Jahangir, or Jahangir with someone else, or someone with someone else. And making those double portraits, then he used to portray the psychological interaction between them. So that was what was pioneered by Manohar and Basavan. Here you can see Akbar is like an old man, he looks tired. Uh, he's speaking to Aziz Khan Khoka. Behind him is Khurram, his grandson, favorite grandson, who became Shah Jahan. Uh, you know, this one has rebelled. Jahangir has rebelled. He looks tired. He looks old. 
a beautiful Saluki dog at the bottom. Indian Saluki dog or Rampur hound. Beautiful. Or this is again written by Jahangir on top. Kare Manohar, Bhut Mahadev. Work of Manohar, you know, portrait of Mahadev. But if you look at Mahadev, he looks very human. He doesn't have four hands, only two hands. He is deep in thought. He is looking down, uh, very pensive. And when I look at it, I don't think of it as descent of Ganga. I think that Manohar, his father has died. And he's made a pictogram of his father, Basavan, Lord of the Bull. You can see the bull at the bottom. You know? So very, very human looking figure and uh, with deep meaning. So next slide please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Many, many thanks, Dr. Rakesh, for such an interesting uh, presentation. Do you have any questions? Anybody? Pin drop silence or koi bhi utke nahi yaha se hai lecture me se. That's a great thing. So spell bound sir sun rahe the. Aapke is lecture ko. And I myself I should say that it was very really very interesting. And uh, the paintings and the colors and the sources that he have included, isne aur zada isko aur authentic aur zada hi the just bana diya hai. I'm really very much grateful to you, our Dr. Rakesh, for uh, uh, taking out uh, time for the library. Aur uh, ye mokha tha ke yahan ye Hindustan aaye aur uh, padna aaye aur ہم لوگوں کو اپنا یہ اپنا قیمتی وقت دے سکے جیسے کہ آپ لوگ سب جانتے ہیں خدا بخش لائبریری ہے اور سم آف دیم ہاف ریسنٹلی بین پابلیشڈ آرسو آویلیبل ان آور ویب سائٹ اور پابلیکیشن سیکشن اس میں کچھ کچھ یہ پینٹنگز بھی نظر آئیں گی جس میں آپ نے جو ابھی دیکھی ہیں تو آئی ویل انوائٹ آل آف یو ٹو کم این سی دیس Paintings of the library, miniature paintings of the Mughals ke alawa, we have recently published uh, a collection of uh, Tanjabur art, gods and goddesses uh, as uh, presented by Venkat Lachmiya, which were prepared in 1834 and they are typical type of paintings. We have a good collection of Padnakalam paintings also, but the larger part is of miniature paintings belong to Mughals only. And top of them is the Murnama that has a collection of more than 100 paintings prepared by the court artists of Akbar. Abhi, jo naam liye, uh, Dr. Rakesh ne, usme Basaman, Mishkin, Khemkaran, ye सारे दसवन मोहनलाल ये सारे नाम याद आते चले जा रहे थे विच आर अवेलेबल इन द मोर नामा मोर देन हंड्रेड पेंटिंग्स आर देयर एंड देस आर दिस आर प्रिपेयर्ड फ्रॉम गोल्ड प्योर गोल्ड एंड द स्टोन्स एंड जेम्स तो उसकी वजह से अभी तक उसमें ओरिजिनलिटी और ग्लिटरिंग बाकी लगती है जैसे एस इफ उसकी जो शाइनिंग है वो ऐसी है जो ओरिजिनल चीजें इसमें लगाई जाती हैं तो उसकी वजह से ये होता है कि द द थिंग्स रिमेन इंटैक्ट गिविंग द लुक ऑफ फ्रेश पेंटिंग्स ओली मैं आप सब की बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ हमारे स्कॉलर्स और आर्टिस्ट कुछ पीछे भी बैठे हैं सीनियर्स दे सेड कि हम वहाँ पीछे से बैठ के अच्छी तरह से देख सकेंगे दे आर सिटिंग एट द बैक आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू डॉक्टर आभा इज आल्सो देयर आई शुड वंस अगेन थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू